the day so far? Yeah. I will apologise for my um, frog in my throat at the beginning of Hello. I'm sorry, it's just that Vegas drives me the fuck out. That's all I can say. Okay? <laughs> and I forgot that I had to come on stage. I was a bit busy, so I didn't have a gulp of pop honey. Right. I'm curious because I know this show was announced and the tickets were sold way before um, it was announced that the Super Bowl was in Vegas. But is anyone here tonight going to the Super Bowl on Sunday? Yeah. Very nice. You got tickets for this and for that. Well, good for you. What's your job? I'm curious. <laughs> Everybody say hello to Eric. Eric, say hello to all of our new friends for the night. It feels exciting in Vegas. Don't get me wrong. I love doing these shows all the time, but... I don't know, it just, it's buzzing, isn't it? It's buzzing out there. Not that I've been out there, but you know, everyone keeps telling me that out there is buzzing. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be traffic on the way back later. But um, I'm excited, I'm excited. I don't know anything about football. Um, I'm, I'm learning and I'm, very, I'm a very, very keen student of it. I just don't understand it. But um, do we have any Chief fans here tonight? Yeah. Do we have any 49 fans here tonight? <laughs> Oh, sorry, Chiefs, you're outnumbered tonight, aren't you? Right, but don't worry, this is the big loving, loving show, so you're going to get on. Eagle! Do we have, what did you say? <laughs> Super Bowl, what did you say? You sound drunk and like you're a football fan. <laughs> we have those in England, but for our football, you know, for soccer. Um, I wish I had some really fun Super Bowl stories to tell you, but I don't have any. Um, do we have any special occasions here tonight? <laughs> Lovely. Do we have any birthdays? Well, happy, happy birthday, one and all. Do we have any anniversaries? Yeah. Happy anniversary. Show me some hands. What numbers have we got? What years? We've got five over there. That's my lucky number. Well done. We've got two years. What are your ones over there? Huh? What? Show me with your hands. I can't hear you. I've got my speakers in my ears. Oh, I can see... Four, Seven years divorce! Six. Six years. Do so we have any that are like 30? Come on, guys. We've got, okay, we've got ten over there. 10, 20 over here, I'd love 50, 50, they're the winners, we've got 50 years over here, front row, happy 50th anniversary, meet me backstage and give me some tips later, do we have any girls trips here tonight, oh, hello ladies, do we have any games trips here tonight, do we have any bachelorette Hindu parties here tonight, <laughs> I think I heard one up the top. Do we have any divorce parties here tonight? Yeah. Oh, there's one. There is actually one. And do we have any mothers and their daughters or mothers and their sons here tonight? Well, welcome. Thank you so, so much for coming. Do we have anyone here, well, I'm hoping it's the majority of you, that haven't been to my show here before? Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you so, so much. I absolutely love doing this show. And um, we are officially tonight three quarters of the way through and we have one quarter left that's my football pun for you guys tonight so this is show 75 tonight so yes we only have 25 left um, so i'm absolutely thrilled to have you here do we have any repeat offenders here tonight who are really well? <laughs> that's the highest possible compliment so thank you so so much for coming before and coming back again um trying to think if i have any updates this week i don't i was when i got into glam they were like what did you do this week and I was like, no, think about it, nothing. But my son is on the school basketball team and their team won this week, which is very exciting. It was their first win, I believe. Um, they're, um... they're 11, what the fuck are you laughing at? <laughs> He's also British, he wants to be a soccer star. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to be a basketball um, Woo, do we have any soccer fans here tonight? <laughs> do we have any Tottenham Hotspur fans here tonight? Oh, fuck off. <laughs> this really feels like a sports crowd. I think I've said fuck off five times and I've only sung two songs. <laughs> well, I'm a Tottenham Hotspur fan because I'm from Tottenham. Do we have any Man United fans? <laughs> have you ever even been to Manchester? <laughs> oh, yeah. Do we have anyone from Manchester? Yeah. Oh my God, we do. Hi. Have fun. Wonderful. Well, so for those of you who haven't seen the show before, see, I have a dry throat and yet all I'm doing is just running my mouth off and making it dry. Oh, one second. So for those of you who haven't seen this show before, also when I'm nervous I talk a lot, which is why I'm talking a lot. And then that drives my throat out as well, but anyway. Whatever, my mic, my mic is always switched on, you'll always know that. You get your money's worth, I tell you. 
so um, yeah, other than my son winning basketball, all I've been doing is I'm training to be an athlete because um, I have some shows in the summer um, where um, I say, yes, I'm playing Munich. I'm doing 10 nights in Munich. I'm very excited. And um, it's a whole new show. And, um, you know, it's such a big audience, which I've done before. Um, and um, I always felt a little bit disassociated because I'm like, how is it possible there's one, like 100,000 people here to see one person? That doesn't make any sense. And it was, you know, I always felt so far away. So I was like, and this show has absolutely just made me not scared of performing in any capacity anymore. So I'm thrilled about it. I know. This show in this room in Vegas will, will forever be the most special, like, it will hold the most special place in my heart. I've loved it. But anyway, because I want to be able to connect with the crowd, I was like, build me a stage out in the, in, in the crowd. And they were like, well, we can't get you there unless you walk there, like, you know, on a stage. So it's basically... I mean, I'm obviously exaggerating a little bit, but I think I'll probably get a good four or five miles in a night walking. So um, I really need to get my stamina up. So I'm working out like twice a day. And um, yes, yes I am. And so that's really all I've been doing. So I don't have anything else to tell you. Obviously I fucking love the Grammys. I thought the Grammys were fantastic on Sunday. I loved it. Miley Cyrus is a, the best superstar. I've always had a soft spot for Miley Cyrus. I think it's because she, you know, she was a child star and stuff like that. Not that I can't relate to that, obviously, but I don't know. I just have such a soft spot for her. And she's just the fucking superstar. And I'm so glad that she's so well and happy. It's just, she's just a winner. I absolutely loved her and she was a superstar. So that was definitely my highlight. I enjoyed the whole thing. I thought it was wonderful. Um, and I guess that's, yeah, that's all of my updates. Oh, that's what I was going to, that's what I was trying to tell you. I keep distracting myself. For those of you who haven't seen this show before, it is, <clears throat> it's a, very much a grower and not a shower. So, <laughs> Obviously, I, I know it looks very nice right now, but this isn't all it does. It's not just me and Eric all night long um, in this giant egotistical A. <laughs> it's just, um, like I said, I know I get quite nervous, and in a weird way, this is like, it settles my nerves a bit quicker, which makes no sense, because my voice is basically butt naked, and, um, and it's just you and me. But it, it, I feel like we get to know each other a little bit, and like we're just hanging out with each other at home or something like that. So. I'm going to give you a couple more piano ballads um, in this setting with like me and Eric in this giant A and then these walls, they do start to move and I'm going to give you a little bit of everything. When I say I'm going to give you two more piano ballads, obviously the whole show is piano ballads. <laughs> which I imagine you know. Um, I do have a few up tempos and they're quite the bops and I will give them all to you. I'll give them all to you all at once because I don't want to pretend that I'm something I'm not. So. I'll give you those sort of like three up tempos and then we'll just go back to being depressed together. <laughs> but you know, a lot of my piano ballads, they have a bit of rhythm, you know, they have a bit of a shaker, a bit of a tambourine, a bit of a, you know, a, bit of a bass line, so there's some movement to it. Um, and, on, and also on that note, um, it's um, this, even though there's chairs and it's all piano ballads, this isn't a seated show, so feel free to stand up whenever you want. And don't worry, you'll see in a minute, there are ginormous screens in here. So even if like, there's someone that's six foot in front of you, just look to your left or right. Don't complain, don't go to security and tell anyone to sit down. Just look to these massive screens that cost me a fucking fortune, all right? <laughs> but yes, but anyway. Um, so um, I'm gonna do a song for you now that is off of my second album. And, um, thank you, and it's, I call it a bit of a golden oldie. <clears throat> because it was quite a long time ago, you know, I take like a decade to release an album each time. <laughs> but also I didn't perform this song for quite a long time, um, especially because the last time, I, or the last and first time, I really, really toured. Um, you know, I, it was on my third album and I'd written other piano puppets by then, so I replaced it with one of the new ones. And I remember people always being like, why didn't you sing, you know, this song that I'm about to do? Um, on, the, on the tour, and I was like, oh, I don't know, but so I decided to put it in and it's been going down very, very well. And I would also strongly encourage um, tonight to just be a giant karaoke because even though I have these speakers in my ears, my ears I can hear you the whole time and it's fun. Um, so are you ready to go on an emotional journey? Good, because I'm taking you there whether you want to go there or not. Head first through all of your own emotional dirt. We're going to cry, but most of all we're going to laugh a lot because I'm a bit of a joker and when I'm nervous, like I said, I'll make you laugh. Um, so I hope you enjoy the show. This is Turning Tables. So this next one that I'm going to do for you before the show starts to grow, like it will, like I told you, <laughs> is um, the first song that I wrote for that second album that Turning Tables is also on. Um, I was 
very, very lucky. Um, I've told this story a few times. You might have heard it in an interview or even on a radio show. I might have done when I was like 21. But I like to end the story, especially for the context of it and stuff like that. But I was very, very lucky that when my first album came out, 19, that I got to leave England with it. I got to go to Europe and I got to come to America, which, you know, I'm 35 now, so it's a pretty long time ago. And um, back then, it was there wasn't really social media. There was like still MySpace and a bit of Facebook, really, like, you know? There wasn't like this immediate ability to discover something, you know, that's not from where you're from. So it was highly unlikely that I would ever have broken America, as we often say in England. Um, and I got to come here and um, I toured um, around America doing radio shows for like a year. And because um, I didn't have an obvious radio here, I had a slow burner, um, like a hot AC record they called it here, um, which was Chasing Pavements on my first album. Yeah. Hmm. Shit, I don't do that so much, I huh? know, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and um, it was, you know, in England we have national radio because it's a tiny fucking island, right? So. Um, you sort of go and do like a radio day in England um, and you know if you're stopping in Manchester or somewhere like that you go to the local station and have a little chin wag and stuff like that um, so the sort of idea of doing a radio tour was kind of crazy to me and when I say radio tour I don't mean like Jingle Bell Ball or nothing like that I mean going to radio stations and um, and you know doing acoustic versions of your songs and stuff like that I specifically very clearly remember one in Buffalo um, because there was uh, don't get me wrong, I love Buffalo, but only one person turned up and he turned up for free pizza. <laughs> so, you know, I was doing things like that for like nearly a year and, um, and it worked, it fucking worked and it paid off. And, um, and then I got to do like a couple of tours here, um, way, obviously, way, way, you know, it was, it was started out in bars and then it was clubs. Then we got to do some of the most beautiful theatres that are around America. They're so beautiful. And then we did amphitheatres for a while, didn't we? And then we did arenas last time on my last album, but I'm talking about my first album. And it was, like I say, it was a really slow burner. And every day I was doing something, and then every day something that I would do would get me another opportunity to do something else, you know? So it was constant. So when that all sort of finished and came to an end um, of that first cycle, I went back home, and within a couple of days I had the itchiest feet ever, because I was so used to like being on the go, whereas now, if I don't have like five days off, I'm like, what's going on? What was it? <laughs> I need, I need, cause I think it's because I'm older and my knees hurt and things like that. I just need a bit more time off between shows. But um, I went straight to the studio and um, I had no idea what was going to happen. Um, I just didn't have any other engagements to do for work and the studio just felt like the obvious thing. And I was not interested in having any kind of rest. And I went to the studio and we, we, we started and finished this song. Um, exactly how it is on, on 21 in less than a day. We did it between like 10 and 5 p.m. Um, and and there, sometimes you have songs like that, like, you know, the best songs write themselves, like, you know, and especially the most like heartfelt, emotional ones that mean the most to you, like, it's, you kind of don't really have anything to do with the process, it's strange. Um, but I was so flabbergasted with myself when I left the studio with this one because it was very unlike anything on my first album and, you know, I didn't, I really didn't know what, what I was going to write about, what it was going to sound like, what I even wanted to sound like. But I knew I wanted to have a sound because my first album didn't really have one. It was very, like, you know, I was very indie, like, on my acoustic guitar, on my acoustic bass, and, like, and, you know, pronouncing my words very London. Um, and after having been in America for so long, I discovered country music, so now I pronounce my words in an American way when I sing, <laughs> which definitely sounds better, in my opinion. Um, and... But anyway, I, you know, it was, it was just all of my favourite styles of music sort of thrown up against, you know, thrown on a CD, basically. Um, and I wrote this song and I couldn't believe how articulate I was with explaining how I was feeling at the time. And I was so pleased that it was a piano ballad because I fucking love piano. And um, I only had one of them, well, two of them kind of, but one of isn't really mine, um, on my first album. And I'm, I'm, I'm making out to you like I created a whole genre of music. I absolutely did not. This genre has been done a million times before me and a million times since me, and it will be done a million times more. Um, but I just wasn't expecting it, and it was such a pleasant surprise. And um, I had grown so much as a songwriter and as a singer and without me noticing. Um, and then obviously the rest is history. I went on to write 11 more songs, and the album ran around the world a few times on its own. So... <clears throat> 
that, you know, that's, I'm very, very fond of this song because of that story I just told you. But for it, I'm going to need the girls. So please give a massive round of applause to Lauren, Amanda, and Katie. Come on out, girls. for two more songs after this and then we're going to be sad for the rest of the night. <laughs> so inside of my tombola, the la last weekend and the weekend before, one kept flying out and I nearly fell down the stairs and broke his back. Okay, so inside of that is every single seat on the very, very top out for me, okay? And I'm going to call out one seat and you can bring one person down with you and you can be my guests for the rest of the show. Okay? <laughs> you can bring one person with you so if you're in a group or like a big party I don't know what to tell you but you have to do it okay so good luck I hope you love each other enough and um we're going to be fine I mean the thing is shows like this on like a big weekend there's lots of scalpers so if you are with a big party you never know there might be some seats at a couple of songs where we know they didn't sell and they're going hungry tonight so your guests can come and sit with you down here okay so we've got block 405 which is you guys right here right yes row f f for freddie that's my dog row f for freddie is seat five one zero <laughs> row f five one zero Me engaging them and them engaging me. And I was like, well, seeing as I'm in these big sporting rooms, let me be my own mascot. So that's how the t shirt gun was born at my shoes. And obviously, this is a fraction of the size of the stadium, but it's too much fun not to do it. I wasn't going to do it when I started these shows, and I was like, oh my God, I've got to, it's too much fun. But a couple of disclaimers I'm not going to be aiming at the floor. You'll see why. It's a very powerful shotgun. Shotgun? Jesus Christ. T shirt. <laughs> And then um, I'm going to be aiming to the balconies. 
But don't fall asleep on me here, Floor, because sometimes my aim is not fantastic, okay? So, so if you fall asleep, it might want to be on the head of someone else with The side of here is a signed t-shirt, 50 bucks, and a handwritten note for me to go buy a silver nice treat. Please don't lean over the balconies, and if you're near a child, give it to the child. Back row, what a fucking shot. Dreading sick well, when I see oh gosh my words are coming out terribly wrong this evening. I was dreading the summertime doing shows here because you know it's a desert and it gets like dry. I've got two more t-shirt guns, I've just got to go over there. And, um, and I was dreading it because of how dry it is and then all the cold air. But my voice was fine in the summer, but the winter, I maybe it's because it's freezing outside, it's a bit warm inside, I don't know, but that dry throat that everyone was always telling me about doing shows in Vegas and feeling it. Are you ready to talk about it? Oh, I love you, I respect you, thank you so much. So, so, so. I've got two more 